Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know what this is about. We've been waiting. <laughs> so, so today, yes, yesterday, we passed HJ 470, which names October the 4th, 2023, and each succeeding year, Henrietta Lacks Day in the Commonwealth of Virginia. For my moment in black history, I'd like to share what some people call the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. Some of you may have already read a little about Henrietta Lacks. Maybe you read it in a magazine. Maybe you even saw the movie. Or perhaps you were here in 2011 when I had invited the Lacks family here to the state capitol so that they could be present when we, honored, when we read the resolution honoring their mother. Now, at that time, I wanted to do a center out presentation but I was told that we just didn't have enough time. But I always knew that wasn't good enough for someone who had contributed that much to this commonwealth. So let me tell you a little bit about her so you can understand why. Henrietta Lacks was a native of Roanoke, and unknowingly, she played an important role in the history of medical science. She was raised by her grandfather on a tobacco farm where her ancestors had worked as slaves. She married Henry Lax in 1941, and they moved to Baltimore County, Maryland. In 1951, a few months after giving birth to their fifth child, Henrietta Lax had severe hemorrhage, and she went to Johns Hopkins Uni Hospital for medical attention because that was the only hospital that would accept black patients. She learned that she had a large malignant tumor that was growing faster than the radiation could treat it. So on October the 4th, 1951, Henrietta Lacks died of cervical cancer. She was buried in an unmarked grave in Clover, Virginia. And this is where the real story begins. Without the knowledge of her family, the doctors at Johns Hopkins had taken samples of Henrietta Lacks' tumor during her treatment, which was a common practice at that time during this racially unjust medical system some 70 years ago. The two doctors treating her quickly learned that although Henrietta Lacks' physical body had died, her cells were considered to be immortal. Her cells double every 24 hours, and they would divide and replenish themselves indefinitely. 72 years later, that's today, her cells are still multiplying and still being used in medical research. Her cells became known as HeLa cells, the HE taken from the first letters, first two letters of her first name and the LA, taken from the first two letters of her last name. Her cells were used to help develop the polio vaccine, to uncover secrets of AIDS, cancer, different viruses, radiation effect, and now, more than 70 years later, her cells help in the COVID-19 research. This should be a story worthy of a great celebration, and it is. But it's also quite disappointing story because with all the financial gain made from the Gila sales, Henrietta Lacks family, her entire state, has received absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, members of the family reported having chronic health problems themselves, but they couldn't afford the health insurance. They couldn't afford the treatment on their own. So contrary to what has been reported, and you will see it reported that Johns Hopkins Hospital reported to the family about their use. The family said, no, they didn't. They never has. And so when I spoke to the family, just before final passage of this bill, yes, the other day, they asked that I change that line because they actually found out by happenstance more than 20 years after Henrietta Lacks' death, her 
Henrietta Lacks' um, daughter-in-law was having lunch with someone who does a lot of research, medical research, and when the second guest that was with them learned her name, she asked, was she a relative of Henrietta Lacks? And when she said she was, she explained that she had been working with HeLa sales for years, and she explained that they came from her mother-in-law, Henrietta Lacks. Now, this was only 20 years ago that they just found out. And this is why, at the risk, when I was before the Senate, and they had their stack of bills that they just wanted to pass unanimously, I had to pause it because I wanted to make sure we got this right, this time for the family. I wanted their voice to be heard and for the truth to be told. That's why I had to make sure I mentioned that we had that substitute on that bill because we wanted to make sure it's right. And I want to thank you all for supporting it. Now, since that time, the family has been trying to learn as much as possible about these HeLa cells and the contributions their mother was making to medical research. As a part of their research, they learned that the company that had possession of the sales says, and they say this themselves, that these sales generate approximately, listen closely, $35 billion every year from these sales. $35 billion. Yet the family has received absolutely nothing. Now, Johns Hopkins could have included them a long time ago, just out of respect for the family or respect for Henrietta Lacks' memory, but they didn't. And Henrietta Lacks, as I said, family received nothing. But what could they do? They were poor, they were black. Who was going to handle their case? No one. And that's just not fair. But you know what? More about a few years ago, more than 70 years after all this happened, someone has decided to take their case. Ben Crump, the famous civil rights attorney, have agreed to take their case. But whatever happens, at least the family has been heard and Henrietta Lacks will finally rest in peace. Although her cells continue to live and they continue to multiply. So this year, and I will be coming to the area, exactly 72 years after her death, on October the 4th this year, we will be able to recognize and celebrate all that she has done for medicine and yes, we will be able to recognize this woman, a black woman, Henrietta Lacks, a true daughter of the Commonwealth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.